the ones of you that I have. We're on section 12.4 today, which is the work is actually on page 482. And as I was going through this, I was like, well, they had some of these questions on your quiz yesterday. So apparently they don't know what section they were supposed to be quizzing over yesterday. But it's got the same questions on the quiz again, so you'll have them again. I don't know what they did. But the thing is, I've learned I can't trust their little key book. I mean, their quiz book. I need to look at it because I have to change when they do stuff. But anyway, because it said it was just over section 12.3, but it obviously has some stuff that was from 12.4 as well. Now, people emailed me their Algebra 1 quiz. All right. So on today's, we have basically three formulas that we got to use. Okay. So I've got the three formulas up here. We are talking about, in section 12.4, what they call, let me click admit, what they call sampling distribution, okay? Sampling distribution. So it's similar to some of the stuff we were doing the other day. Remember when we were trying to find our Z-score the other day, you took, the x minus the mean over the standard deviation. So that part's still the same. But then we have another thing that we have to find, and then we plug that in and find another one. So it, <laughs> we're doing like we did in the original ones from the last section, but then we've got two other steps we're going to have to do. Okay? So we start off the same basic way, but this got a little bit more to it. So we've got our three main formulas there that we're going to be using. Okay, so looking at these, <laughs> remember when we were talking about them before, X was like the individual value that they gave you. So we got that. The little mu stands for the mean of the data. The little sigma stands for the standard deviation of the values. N is your sample size, how many that are in the sample. And that's what makes this different is because we're doing a sampling distribution. Instead of looking at the entire thing, the normal distribution, we're only looking at part of it called the sampling distribution. Okay, so with that, we have the mean of the sample which you all should recognize the little X with the bar over it as mean because we had that before. And then you have the standard deviation of the sample, which has the little sigma with the little X down below it that we use for mean so you know it's not the same as the original standard deviation. So you have your regular standard deviation and then you have your one with the bar, which is your standard deviation of the sample. So. On page 578, where it's talking about section 12.4, <laughs> it has some definitions. It has anecdotal evidence, which I talked about that when I was reviewing for the quiz the other day. I didn't realize that it wasn't until today's section, but the quiz said it was over section 12.3. So, like I said, Rebecca had messed that up, but most of you got it right anyway because I told you what it was before you took the quiz. So, it's an isolated case that is cited to support a claim. And then what we're talking about mainly today is the sampling distribution. So instead of relying on single temperature comparisons, we're comparing the averages to get more accurate results. So sampling distribution finds the desired probability by creating a distribution of samples or means instead of the individuals. So it's looking at the averages instead of the individual values. And then we've got our little formulas there that we're gonna be using. And then on page 579 down at the bottom, it starts talking about central limit theorem. <clears throat> okay. In the central limit theorem, <clears throat> we talked about that when we were reviewing for the quiz the other day too. Okay. <clears throat> The central limit theorem describes the properties of sampling distributions and has several principles. As the sample size n increases, the sampling distribution, the distribution of averages, will become more and more normal. The mean of sample averages is equal to the mean of individual values, and that was the question that they had went ahead and stuck on your quiz yesterday, even though it doesn't even talk about it till today for some reason. 
Then it has um, the standard deviation of sample averages is equal to the standard deviation of individual values divided by the square root of the sample size. And that's where this formula right here comes in that we're going to be using today. Because it's standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. Okay, so we have six whole problems today. Okay, we're going to be working on page 582. We're doing the teal problems. So we got three at the top and then three at the bottom. So we have separate instructions for each. For the ones at the top, it says calculate the requested z scores for each situation using the given mean and normal distribution standard deviation. So we're going to have to use all three of my formulas that I have written up here. Okay, so I've got the formulas here next to the problems, plus you had them in your book. So, okay, so we're going to read the problem, plug the numbers into the formulas, use our calculators, get our answers, get these finished. All right, so <laughs> looking at number one on page 582. Everybody with me? Number one, page 582, okay? So it says, suppose a group of athletes averages for running a mile follows a normal distribution where the mu equals 474 seconds, or the mean, with a standard deviation of 18 seconds. Compare the z-scores of a single athlete's time of 438 seconds with the average of six athletes time of 461 seconds. So when you're doing these, you have two things that it's gonna have in the problem. You're gonna have a single person's and then you're gonna have an average of so many of them, okay? So we have single person, we have average. Remember average is another word for mean. So that's why we got two separate things that we're doing there with the two Z scores. So, Let's start with the first one, which is the individual. Now the individual time is like the problems that we did the other day, okay? So to find your z-score, we're using the first formula, okay? The individual person time was 438 seconds. The average time was 474. And then the standard deviation was 18 seconds. So that's what we start with. We start with just the basic z-score like what we did the other day, okay? So I'm using that first formula there. So I take 438 minus 474, you'll get a negative number, and then you're gonna divide that by 18, Everybody agree with me? Negative two? Okay. Yeah. Now, for the next one, before I can find the z-score for the average, remember it had six athletes that had an average time of 461. That was their average time together. So this is when I have to use my second formula here, which is talking about the standard deviation of the average, the mean. So what was my regular standard deviation that it gave me at the beginning? 18. 18, so 18 is over top. And then on the bottom, how many students did it have average together, or athletes? Four hundred and... No, not their time, but how many of them were there? Um, oh, six athletes, six. Six, there were six. It was the average of six athletes times, right? So mm -hmm. your second equation is you take your regular standard deviation, so it's the bottom of the first one, over how many people were averaged together for the second one. So then I'll work that out. So I have 18 divided by square root of six. Now, your calculator is gonna give it to you probably like this. Okay, 
We don't want it like that. We need it as a decimal. So you hit the little SD button and it changes to a big old long decimal. Now, when we've been having big old long decimals in here, in this book, they usually make us keep how many places? Three, Three. places. So it will be 7.348. So that is my average standard deviation, okay, or my standard deviation of the sample, okay? So that's the one that I'm going to use in my z-score for the average, okay? Now here's the way this works. For the second z-score formula, you have the average time. What was their average time? 474. Of the six athletes, it was 461. Oh. And then that's minus the average of the whole thing, the, the mu, 474. And then on the bottom, you'll notice I put my standard deviation of the sample. That's the number I found here, 7.348. So it's very important on here, if you haven't noticed yet, a lot of times you take something that you used in the first equation and you have to use it in the second one. So it, it's very important you get the one part right before you go to the next one. Okay? So we have 461 minus 474. And then we're going to divide that by 7.348. And that's going to round off. Now when we're talking about a z-score, those usually have how many decimal places at the end? Okay, I see the first one just has the one decimal place. So it's going to be negative 1.8. Okay. Now, <laughs> we had three different equations we had to do for just one problem. Okay, we had to first find our regular z-score for the individual person's time. Then we had to find our standard deviation of the mean of the sample. And then we had to find the z-score of the average athlete's time. Now, the reason we have to do that is because the question actually asks us which value is farther from the mean. So which one of these, negative 2 or negative 1.8, is farther from the mean? Negative 2. Negative 2, right? So negative 2 represents represented the single value of 438 seconds. Okay, because it was a negative two, so that was the one that was farther away from the mean. Okay, so we'll have three equations and then you have to tell which one's farther from the mean. Okay. Now, number two, we're going through the same process. Number three, we're going through the same process. And then seven, eight, nine, we only have two equations we have to use instead of three. So they're a little bit shorter. Okay, so number two it says the average time it takes for a group of students to finish a test follows a normal distribution where the mean is 47 minutes and a standard deviation is five minutes. Compare the z-score of Jenny's time of 41 minutes with 10 students' average time of 46 minutes. Which value is farther from the mean? So we're doing the same thing that we just did on number one. You start off with Jenny's first and find her z-score, how far she is from the mean. So we're going to take Jenny's time, which was 41 minutes, and we're going to subtract the average mean time was 47, and we're going to divide it by the standard deviation, which was 5. So we're going to see how far she is from the mean first. Everybody agree with that? Name 1.2. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Right. 
So now for number, for not, not number three, it's the second part of number two. Now for the second part of number two, we have to find the standard deviation of the sample. So to find the standard deviation of the sample, we take our regular standard deviation. Our regular standard deviation was the five that we had in the bottom of this one. And divide it by the number of students that, that said were averaged together, which that was your sample size, which was 10. So you have five divided by the square root of 10. Make sure you change it to a decimal. We're gonna keep three places. Now like that. Okay. Now, we gotta find this Z score for the average. So what was the average time for the 10 students together? How many minutes? 46, 47. It was 46. 46. And then your average for everybody on the normal distribution. 47. So you have 46 minus 47. And then this that I found here is my standard deviation that goes on the bottom according to my formula. So I have 1.581 on the bottom. So that's what we've solved now. Where are y'all getting? Negative 0 0.6. Okay, good. Now, again, it asks which value is farther away from the mean? So her, her time or the average student's time? Uh, average. Time. You got negative 1.2 and negative 0 0.6. So which one's farther from the mean, which would be like your zero, your starting point? Oh, her time. Her time. Okay, so single value of 41 minutes is the one that's farther from the mean. Okay, pretty easy. Look at number three. Number three says for a certain city, the normal distribution for temperatures in the summer is a mean of 83 degrees Fahrenheit with a standard deviation of seven degrees Fahrenheit. Compare the z-score of a single day having a temperature of 87 degrees with a 30-day average of 84 degrees. Which value is farther from the mean? So we start with our basic z-score. So the single day temp was 87 degrees. So I have 87 minus my average temp that they gave me, 83 degrees, divided by the standard deviation of 7. So that's the first one I work out. And I'm going to scoot you over this way a little bit there. That gets the glare off there. So 87 minus 83 divided by seven. You'll get a decimal. You round it off to one place for a z-score. So it's gonna be what? Zero point six. Zero point six, okay. So that's my z-score for the single day of 87 degrees. Now, for my average of the sample, my standard deviation of the sample, I take my regular standard deviation, which was seven, and divide it by the square root of the sample size. How many days did they average together? 30 days. 30. So I have seven divided by the square root of 30.
1.3. Ah. Remember, on Z scores, we have one decimal place. On our standard deviation, we keep three decimal places. So, Z scores, you keep one, standard deviation, you keep three. Okay? Now, to find the Z score for the average, the average tip for the 30 days was 84 degrees. So I'd have 84 minus 83, that was my mean, and divided by my standard deviation of the sample, 1.278. So that's what we're gonna solve. Should get big old long decimal. Now this is a Z score. So for this one, you just keep how many decimal places? One. One. So it's gonna just be 0 0.8. So my two Z scores are 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. Which one of those is gonna be farthest away from mean? Pretend mean is zero, because that's right in the middle. 0 0.6. Oh, 0. 0.8 yeah, is going to be farther. Oh. So this time, instead of being the single value, it's going to be the average value of 84 degrees Fahrenheit is going to be the one that's farther from the mean. Okay? So that's how we do these questions. Pretty easy or hard? Yes or no? Which one do you think? They have three formulas that we have to use, but they're not too bad. You just got to remember when you're doing z-score, you keep one decimal place. When you're doing a standard deviation, you're going to keep three decimal places. Now, the next part is similar to these, except we're not comparing z-scores. Okay, we're not comparing z-scores. We're just using the central limit theorem. So the central limit theorem is basically just using the last two. It's just using the last two equations. We're not having to find an individual z-score first. We're just worried about finding the standard deviation of the sample and then the z-score for the average. So we just have those two formulas that we're using on seven, eight, and nine. Okay. <laughs> now for seven, eight, nine, the directions say calculate the requested probability. Now when it's talking about a requested probability, when it's doing probability for these, it actually wants them as a percent. Okay. And I even put, when you get to the point where we have a quiz that has stuff like this on there, I even put parentheses as a percent after the word probability. So you make sure you put your percent sign on your answer. Okay, put it on there so you know. It's talking about finding a probability for one of these, it wants it as a percent. So we'll get our decimal and then we move it two places to the to the right. Right, and get your percent. So on number seven, it says write the answer to the tier tenth percent. See, it even told you percent, once percent. So using our central limit theorem, like I said, it's mainly just using the last two formulas. So for number seven, <clears throat> it says, suppose a certain airline has a normal distribution of delay times where the mean is 63 minutes and the standard deviation is 20 minutes. If five flights were chosen randomly, okay, so that's your sample size, five flights, were chosen randomly, what is the probability that the average wait time will be longer than 70 minutes? So we have to think a little bit more when we're setting these up, but we're still using only two formulas this time instead of three. So for number seven, <laughs> we start off with this formula. So remember on this formula, your standard deviation goes on top. So what was my standard deviation of delays? 63? No. Oh, the 20. The deviation was the 20 minutes, right? Mm-hmm. 
And then I told you they picked how many flights as a sample? Five. Five. So you have three root of five on the bottom. So that's the first part. Make sure you get it as a decimal. Remember when we're doing standard deviation, we keep, we try to keep like three decimal places. That's what I got. Somebody check it, make sure I typed it in right. 8.944. You all see. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. For the next part to actually, I'm sorry, I keep feeling like I'm going to sneeze and it won't come out. All right. For the next part, we're actually doing the Z score part. Okay. Now, what were they saying the average time was going to be? How many minutes at the end? 70. 70. So you got 70 minus the actual average time, which was the 63, right? So you have 70 is what they're saying for the average over the given mean, minus the given mean 63. And then we're dividing it by our standard deviation we found of the sample 8.944. So that's what we're going to divide. Oh, I really wish I could just sneeze and get it out. Okay. So let me do that. Now remember, this is a z-score, so I round it off to how many decimal places? One. So it's going to be 0 0.8. Because it's like 7, 8, 2, 6, blah, 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 forever. Okay? Now, we're still not done, though, because that's the z-score. Okay? So when we have our z-score, we got to think a little bit more about what this said. Okay. It said it wanted to know the probability that it would be above 70 minutes. Okay. Now remember your prob your Z score tells you the probability of it being what? Below, right? Below. The the number you find on the table tells you the amount the probability or chances of it being below. So we're gonna have to use our table for one thing. So we have 0.8. Everybody remember where the table is? Page 567. Still using the same table, 567. So we find 0 0.8. Do, do, do. 0.788. Okay. Now remember, that is below. It wants to know the probability of it being above 70. So what do I have to do to find above? Do you remember? Do something with one. Do minus one. Yeah. You're gonna take one minus 0.788 to find out what it would be above. So what's that going to be? No agree with that? No. But then it told me to write it as a percent, so now what do I still have to do? Move the decimal. Two places. So my final answer is 21.2%. So even though it technically only had two equations, it still wasn't really any shorter because we had to pay attention to whether it said below or above. Now, if it said below, we would have just used the z-score, found the number on the table, moved the decimal, and got the answer. Okay? So that's all number seven. Only got two more. We can get it done. All right, number eight. 
says stand experiences a normal distribution of times for traffic delay where the mean is eight minutes and the standard deviation is 10 minutes. Determine the probability of 12 delays having an average of seven minutes or shorter. So your given standard deviation is 10. So in my first formula, your standard deviation, 10 goes on top, and that's over the square root of the sample size. It said the probability of 12 delays. So my sample size is 12. So that's what I have to use to find my standard deviation of the sample. Remember, we keep three decimal places on this. Y'all agree with that? Okay. Because it's 88675, blah, blah, blah. So 887. Okay. Now to find my Z score, I take it said, I lost it. All right. That the average of seven minutes or shorter is the delay. So it's saying the delay is seven minutes. Your usual delay on here, the mean was eight minutes. So I have seven minus eight over the 2.887. So that's what I'm working out. So seven minus eight. Now remember on this one, you're actually finding a Z score. So you only keep one decimal place. So it's gonna be what? Negative zero. Three. Negative zero point three. three. Okay. Now, let's read our question again. It says determine the probability of 12 delays having an average of 70 minutes or shorter. So if it's talking about shorter, is that going to be above or below? Below. That's talking about below. So I'm not going to have to do the subtracting from one thing this time. I just look at my table and find what the number is for this and move my decimal point. So you do negative zero on the left hand side and 0.3 across the top and you get 0.382. And since it said shorter than, that means less than or below, then I just use that number and it's 38. 0.2%. So that one was actually a little bit shorter because it was talking about less than. Okay. All right. Last one. Number nine says a certain company's daily stock price follows a normal distribution where the average or mean is $52.15 with a standard deviation of $2.77. If 10 days are taken, so that's your sample size, 10, what is the probability the average price will be above $54.12? So on this one, it says above, so it's gonna be more like number seven. We're gonna have to do the subtracting from one thing again. Okay, so we start off by taking our standard deviation, which was $2.77. And we divide that by the square root of the sample size, which was 10 days. So that's our first step. And when we're doing the standard deviation, we keep three decimal places. Y'all agree with that? I'm trying to see if I typed it in right. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. All right, so our next one is for our Z-score. It says, <clears throat> it wants to know if the price will be 54.12, so that's what it's saying for the price. 
Now your main price that they gave you originally was $52.15. And then the standard deviation of the sample was 0.876. So that's what we're solving for that part. Now remember, this is a z-score, so on this one, we just keep one place behind the decimal. So where are you gonna get? I got 2.2. 2.2, .2. okay. Now, <laughs> we use our z-score to find our value on the table. Like I said, this is like number seven. We're gonna to have to do an extra step in a minute. But you go to page five, six, seven. Okay, in case you hadn't noticed yet, it would be a good idea to put like a post or something on that page because you're using it a lot. You go just two over on the left-hand side and then point two at the top. And I see point nine, eight, six. If I read across the rows correctly. But then it said it wanted to know that it was above the 54.12. So I'm going to take 1 minus 0.986 and get 0 0.014. Okay. And then remember here, you move your decimal two places. So there's only a 1.4% chance of the stock price going above $52.12. Okay. So that's section 12.4. Now, tomorrow we're going to talk about section 12.5. We're not doing everything in 12.5 because 12.5 was an optional section. So we're going to talk about the basics, make mainly focus on the definitions, the two main types of hypotheses. Okay, that's gonna be our focal point. We're gonna work on that, just the definitions and those things. And then we'll just be reviewing everything from chapter 12. And then over the weekend, you'll have a quiz over section 12.4 and 12.5 that you can take anytime you want over the weekend after we review on Friday. Okay, so that's the plan. And then all next week, we're going to be reviewing for the exam, big test. You're almost done. Okay. Your big test exam is two weeks from today. And then you will be finished with Algebra 2. Okay. You will be finished with Algebra 2. So please. Ms. Pelham? What? Um, if we're finished with the extra credit early, do we turn it into... Like, yeah, just go like ahead next class. whenever you're ready. Yeah, you can, okay. whether you did it in Google Docs. If you do it in Google Docs, you have to make sure you put it where you can share it with me. Um, otherwise, most people have just been like taking a picture and attaching it to an email or sending it to my school email, which is cstellum at harvestacademy.net. So any, either way. Okay. However you can get them to me is fine. But yeah, be, don't forget about the extra credit because I don't want anybody waiting until they're taking the exam and say, oh, I need extra credit. Guess what? That's too late. Okay? That's why I gave it to you early so you have time to work on it. Okay? Now, for you all, I do, I am going to try to do tutoring again tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So when am I going to have tutoring again? Two o'clock. Two tomorrow for you all. I did algebra one yesterday. I'm doing the seventh grade math today. Tomorrow I'll do your all's class. Okay. So tomorrow, two o'clock, I will email you the meeting ID and password through my school works. So either tonight or in the morning, I will send you a message through my school works that has the Zoom meeting ID and the password for the tutoring at two o'clock. And we'll talk over anything you still need for this, these sections we're doing right now for those quizzes for this weekend or some of the stuff from chapter 11 that was bad. 
that y'all were supposed to come to tutoring for last Friday and you didn't come because you thought, it's Friday, I'm not doing it. Well, I was here. You should have been here. So, okay. Any other questions about what you got to do, what you owe me, what you need to get done? We're good? Yeah? Everybody's good? Everybody's got these down? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Work on your extra credit. And I will see you all tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Bye. Bye.